Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday, December 20th, 2020, here in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, playing in the background there, Kenny Loggins, Danger Zone, the theme song of MilitaryAirFan2.wordpress.com. I am your friendly neighborhood watchman coming to you again today with another video. It's been a while since I posted one. Time alone on my at home hasn't been in huge supply for me here recently. I'll turn this down just a little bit. Um, so anyway, time alone here at home hasn't been in large supply for me here recently. Posted my first Watchman's Diecast video um, and blog for the first time yesterday in a long time. Um, so anyway, um, today um, I, w I wanted to start looking at and trying to be more frequent about doing this and posting videos about the, like today in military aircraft history and everything. Um, well, by now, I'm going to go ahead and turn Kenny Loggins off here. Anyway, by now, you all know my fondness for the B-17s. Um, well, for classic military aircraft, especially from World War II, but especially the B-17s after I found out about my uncle Sanford E. Losh, uh, Staff Sergeant Sanford E. Losh, being a waste scanner on B-17 number 44-6546 that was lost over Hungary on February 13th, 1945. Um, and anyway, so I, you know, I collect uh, diecast planes and models and things like that, but especially the B-17s. Um, so anyway, um, so anyway, he was with the uh, 301st uh, Bomb Group, 32nd Bomb Squadron, and 15th Air Force, of course. And 77 years ago today, an act of mercy was shown to a stricken B-17 uh, trying to head home after an air battle in Germany and uh, was, I mean, uh, to heading back to their base in England. And they, they were literally probably flying on a wing in a prayer at this point because they were so badly shredded. Um, you know, they had, uh, it was it was uh, the B-17 Ye old Pub. If any of you B-17er uh, fans are familiar with that or any of you that, that flew in World War II or whatever, I'm sure you're familiar with the Ye old Pub. I tried to look up and see if I could find the, num the tail number on that, but I couldn't seem to, to find anything on that. Um, but anyway, they had a dead tail gunner and they had nine other crew members wounded, including the pilot, Charlie Brown. Funny, you know, we celebrate Charlie Brown Christmas this time of year, and the pilot's name happened to be Charlie Brown. So that's that's kind of kind of funny. Um, but uh, anyway, they were trying to head home to their base in England, and but uh, Charlie thought that, uh, uh, and, and this, this was something that no one would have believed um, otherwise, and um, that uh, in their in their wildest dreams it would have happened on uh, a you know in uh, December of uh, December twentieth of nineteen forty three. As they tried to fly home to England, um, and uh, Charlie Brown thought that surely he and his crew were done for um, when uh, a Luftwaffe BF-109 pilot approached the tail uh, of their very stricken B-17, uh, barely able to, you know, barely able to fly, uh, piloted by Hans Stigler, who, as he approached the tail of the B-17, he was one bomber kill away from Germany's Honor of the Knights Cross. That was the highest award given to people in the military or paramilitary um, in World War II at that point. It was established September 1st, 1939 and first awarded September 30th, 1939. That is the honor of the Knight's Cross. And um, it was, um, he was in his Messerschmitt BF-109. Um, it was designed by Willie Messerschmitt and Robert Lucer. And its first flight was uh, May 29th, 1935. Um, not the not the plane that he was flying particularly, but the BF 109s, the Messerschmitt BF 109s, um, and just one burst from the 109s guns would have, you know, caused the Yield Pub to be done for, and would have been lost and likely with no survivors. Okay, but especially with all the people who were already injured as it was, and but something stopped Stigler from pressing the trigger that day, and he instead flew up to make eye contact with wounded First Lieutenant Brown and escorted them out of Germany over in, over the waters, and Ye Old Pub was able to return to England. And of course, uh, Stigler turned back before he got too close to England, um, but he was going to make sure that that plane made it out of Germany safely. What caused Stigler to not pull the trigger that day? He was one bomber kill away from the honor of the Knight's Cross Award, okay? Um, by the way, I'm half German, okay? I'm half German, half Irish. 
And in 2021, I'm kind of setting up uh, a list of, you know, my goals. People would call them New Year's resolutions. I just call them goals. Um, I've always been a list maker and I've always, I'm always about, you know, doing things differently, making changes, being flexible. I think sometimes I'm too flexible. Um, actually, sometimes it's to my detriment. Uh, some people say I'm so flexible. Sometimes I just let people walk all over me. Um, but anyway, I won't get into to all that. But anyway, um, read a book here recently called um, Raving Fans. Um, I deliver dry cleaning. I do free pickup and delivery of dry cleaning and wash, dry, fold laundry uh, where I'm at for uh, dry cleaning to you, www.dc-2u.com. Um, that's the letter D, the letter C, dash, uh, the, le the number two, the letter U, and .com. It's, we only operate here in the Kansas City area, so you'd have to be in the Kansas City area to be able to use our service. We're not a drop-off and pickup location for dry cleaning. We are a service um, that does pickup and delivery of dry cleaning and wash, dry, full laundry. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, you know, so anyway, I read this book recently because of work called Raving Fans. And at the very end of the book, it talks about the principle of 1%. If you can change, there's 52 weeks in a year. If you can make improvements or changes uh, just 1% per week over the 52 weeks of a year, then by the end of the year, you're ahead over 50%. And I was, so I was kind of setting up my, my plan for uh, 2021 and break, breaking down the changes and, and, and things I've made in 2020 into different categories and, and setting up what I wanted, what I'm hoping to do. Maybe you know, I, maybe I won't get around to all of it, but at least potential things I want to do for 2021 in different categories. There's work, there's home, there's uh, ministry and and uh, faith and and uh, you know that type of thing um, for 2021. And one of those is to learn about Germany and Ireland more, a lot more, and learn more about my heritage in both those countries. I'm I'm German on my Losh side, L O S H. Uh, been spelled all kinds of different ways over the years, and then Irish on my paternal grandmother's side, which her maiden name was Looney, spelled just like Looney Tunes. So you got to be Looney to belong to the family, you know. But so I'm planning to learn more about Ireland, more about Germany, and really learn about and appreciate more of my German and Irish heritage in those areas. But anyway, um, this unprecedented situation went on to become the subject of a best, a New York Times and an international best-selling book, A Higher Call by Adam Marcos and Larry Alexander. Um, and I am far from the first blogger uh, or vlogger, either one, to uh, to document this incident. Um, so many people have come before me. It's also been the subject of a radio play that has been played all over the place and things like that. And I will be posting some links in the blog uh, on uh, www.militaryairfan2.wordpress.com um, as a result of this. But anyway, so Hans Stigler, German BF-109 pilot, one bomber kill away from the German uh, honor of the German, um, was it honor of the Knight's Cross, highest award given to military and paramilitary, which started from the onset of Germany's um, invasion of Poland in uh, World War II. Um, so he was one, one uh, bomber kill away from that, and something told him not to pull the trigger that day. And those two men reunited in like 1990 after Brown searched the world looking for Stigler. They reunited in 1990, not as old enemies, but as brothers who had flown in the skies and done battle uh, for their countries and things like that, and were able to just share stories and, and just become friends and things like that. And I, I think that that is just very cool um, when you find people that you haven't seen in a long time and stuff like that, even if it is an old enemy. Um, you know, I was bullied in high school, okay? high school and middle school, bullied all the time. And uh, sometimes for my faith, um, as a Christian, I carried a Bible, led Bible study and prayer meetings before school in a room that was given to us uh, by the school. My best friend and I, that I led to Christ the day after I accepted Christ, uh, which I accepted Christ December 13th, 1981, by the way. So I celebrated my spiritual birthday um, here on December 13th. So I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, led him to, to Christ the next day on December 14th, 1981. We were trying to start uh, Bible clubs in our middle school and eventually our high school for the ministry that at that time was here in the Kansas City area known as Kansas City Youth for Christ. Uh, some of you are familiar with their their uh, partner, uh, sister ministry, uh, Teens for Christ, uh, that was you know all over the country and things like that. Uh, but we were just never able to find an adult sponsor, but the school did give us the room to have prayer meetings and Bible studies in. And we led those uh, every morning before school, five days a week. Um, and everybody called me preacher and reverend and things like that. So anyway, I was bullied a lot. Um, but once I first got on Facebook years and years ago, 
I had several people reach out to me on Facebook, uh, either ones that bullied me or ones that stood and watched. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we were so mean to you in high school. Either I bullied you or I used to buy and watch or whatever. And I didn't understand what you were doing then. I know we teased you and called you reverend and called you preacher and, and beat up on you. like that. But I've come to know the Lord Jesus Christ since high school uh, or middle school, uh, either one. And I, I need your forgiveness. And can you forgive me and things like that? And I'm like, absolutely, I can forgive you. I've never carried a grudge. I don't remember the names or faces of half the people that did that. There's probably only one incident that I remember specifically. And even that person I've forgiven. I've, I've tried to, to, to be friends with on Facebook and even offer to get together with them. Uh, they never did respond. I don't know whether it was because maybe they thought I was getting together with them so I could throw that in their face of, hey, you did this to me. And so, no, it was actually just to be their friend. And just they have, they've been saying they're going through some tough times. And I just want to get together with them. Just, hey, what's what's going on in your life? And how can I pray for you? And things like that. And just, again, one-on-one, -on -one, just try to share the gospel uh, now that we're both adults and we're grown up and, and things in the past are the past and that type of thing. So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's the lead. Either way, anyway, uh, December 20th, 1943, over Germany. Uh, Hans Stigler doesn't pull the trigger on a stricken B-17 piloted by First Lieutenant Charlie Brown. Uh, pretty much all the crew were wounded. And like I said, had he pulled that trigger, uh, the B-17 old pub would have been done for, likely with no survivors. And instead, it survived and made it back to its base in England. So, and it, now it's a subject of the New York Times bestselling and international selling book uh, by Adam Marcos and Larry Alexander, A Higher Call. And I absolutely plan on getting that. If I would have thought about it before, I would have put that on my Christmas list to tell my, my wife or my daughter to get me for Christmas. But that's okay. I'll get it here in the new year. I'm an avid reader. Um, I mentioned here in my vlog before that I'm reading Wing to Wing, Air Combat in China from 1943 to 1945 about the Flying Tigers uh, that flew the P-40 Warhawks. I have a model P-40 Warhawk. I have a picture that was off of an old aircraft, a military aircraft calendar um, on my wall with my military airplane collection. And I painted my B-17 model to look like that picture. Uh, so that's kind of cool too. So anyway, and I'll be eventually be doing a feature on the uh, P-40 Warhawk. I'm also going to do one on the F-4U Corsair, otherwise known as Whistling Death, that was flown by the Black Sheep Squadron. That's one of the things that got me interested in, in classic military aircraft when I, was, when I was young, was the Black Sheep Squadron. I love the show. I love the planes. Um, I have one of the little die-cast uh, for you Corsairs. Hope to maybe do a model of it. Um, but unfortunately, my aircraft models are not cheap anymore. When I started doing models years and years ago, you get a model car, model plane, whatever, for like you know five or ten bucks, and now they're like thirty, forty bucks a piece. Unless you're wanting to do a bigger one like a B-17, and now you could be talking even more than that. Get down, get get off, get. So my wife got a new kitten for for Chris for her birthday last month. His name was Milo, and he's uh, he's got his sweet, adorable moments, but he's a holy terror right now. I said to shoo him off our kitchen table here. Um, which is a very frequent occurrence. Had to put our Christmas tree away. Couldn't even leave that out as normal. Just, um, long story, but yeah, new kitten. You probably get it. So anyway, um, hope you guys have enjoyed this. And I hope as we're celebrating Christmas that you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. We're celebrating the life of my pastor's father-in-law at 3 p.m. this afternoon. His father-in-law passed away. Uh, Miss Kelly, his wife's dad, passed away back on December 8th. His name was Ron. And um, but we're celebrating his life and the fact that he did absolutely know the Lord Jesus Christ is his personal Lord and Savior. So we know that a he's not suffering anymore. Um, his wife said told me today that had he even gone home um, from the hospital that he would have probably been on oxygen 24 seven for the rest of his life. So he's not here suffering. But we also know where he's at. We know he's with Jesus Christ and he has uh, eternity in heaven. And we look forward to seeing him again one day. So same thing happened with my father. I lost my dad in 13. And he was an alcoholic. He was physically abusive. So which made the bullying at school even harder because I didn't have anybody to come home and confide in. Um, but and I'm not saying this to garner sympathy. It just it is what it is. And uh, but he had become a believer. And I was at his bedside for the last two uh, weeks of his life. And the day he passed, I was, you know, of course, in tears. But uh, which I didn't think was going to be the deal either, because years ago, I used to think when he died, I wasn't going to care. But I was in tears. and was able to look down and say, good night, Dad. I'll see you in the morning. We well, hope you've enjoyed this. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior if you haven't done it. He loves you. He died for you. He created you. He wants a relationship with you. Beloved, if I don't see you here, I'll see you in the air. I'll see you next time here on militaryairfan2.wordpress.com. God bless. Jesus loves you. I love you. See you next time.